Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Paragon Competitive League North America, number four. And we have a we have another thing happening pretty soon, Nate. Uh, the EU division next weekend, which hasn't been officially announced, but has been unofficially announced. We've talked about it a little bit this weekend. You're going to be a very integral part of that, um, being part of the caster crew there as well. <laughs> so that's going to be very, very cool to see um, all you guys joining the team and all the really cool stuff, guys. We um, have a lot of... Uh, new layers of content coming out, and we really are uh, we, we're dreaming big as far as what we're able to produce on our side, and uh, with our powers combined, we're going to try to obtain that. So I'm I'm so glad to be casting with you today. Even though it was impromptu, man, it's been an absolute pleasure thus far. <laughs> Let's get into it, though. Game number two, Oxygen looked absolutely... There, there's no other way to put it. Oxygen just looked like a superior team in every single way. Uh, yeah, it's, um, I mean, I, I know Rat Pack, even though I don't watch them so much, I know they're a good side. They have good players. I, I recognize the players. Um, so for, for Oxygen to do what they did to them, you know, it, it tips to how good Oxygen are, basically. So yeah. I'm not sure there's many teams that can stand up to that sort of pressure and how Oxygen take the game. Um, hopefully Rat Pack have, re, you know, reconsolidated and thought, you know, what, what can we do? Can we beat them out in the draft? Uh, I'm not sure to the, the strengths uh, and how they play the game right now. I haven't watched enough of Rat Pack, but... Right, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, it's hard to even draft out Oxygen NA at the minute um, because they're so, so good on their, yeah, and their roles. So I think it's difficult to ban them out. you just got to ban them out what you want to do on your team and your composition, try and ban out whatever will will be so detrimental to that, um, to that makeup, basically. So... Um, we're going to get into this draft here, Nate. We're going to get right into it, my man. There it is. <laughs> Rampage. Rat Pack's like, nerp. We don't want to be dealing with Rampage. Last time they banned out Aurora, um, do you think that was the right ban for them, to ban out Aurora? Or do you think maybe just go with the good old copy-paste, either Steel, either the Steel uh, steel ban, Rampage ban, or Decker ban, like those, or Muriel. Like those are the four uh, we see all the time. I, I think the, the triumphant of bans has usually been your initiators. So your Rampage, your Decker, and your Steel. They have been, they're either the first pick or the two bans, you know, that it always rotates around them. So uh, Muriel now and again, but I, yeah. I'm not expecting that as much. So yeah, they, uh, we'll, we'll see how this one goes. Pretty standard stuff here, my man. So there's the Rampage and the Muriel ban out from Oxygen. Oxygen is the one banning out oh, Muriel <laughs> this time around. So uh, Decker picked up first pick for Rat Pick. Marty's going to have a sad about that, but that's okay. He's a big boy. He'll be able to get onto another support and uh, do his thing. Uh, Marty uh, has been known as, like, the Decker player since, like, forever. <laughs> like, even when yeah. Decker, before teams realized how strong of a hero she was, this was we're dating ourselves here, Nate. This was back to, like <laughs> like, May of last year, you know. Um, Marty was like Marty was one of the first people who showed how strong of a hero Decker was, and actually Decker got uh, a little bit of a change around that time. Steel and uh, Howitzer picked up here for Team Oxygen, so I think just the three strongest heroes in their respective role being picked up in the first part of the draft. No surprise at all, and at this time it's going to be Rat Pack picking up the sp the Sparrow. Imsco is not going to get his hands on that, so he'll have to settle with. Uh, I'd imagine what's going to be a Grim. Just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> who? <laughs> he he looks like a minion and does a little bit of damage. Uh, is is what he looks like. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. The true story. I think it was our first PCL. Yeah, it was the first PCL. Imsco still, and I think that was he still on Reborn then. I don't remember. Either way, it was Imsco, and he he actually played Grim and won with him. So that was very early on the Monolith though, before people were like Murdoch's pretty good. So uh, I don't think that's gonna be happening. I imagine it's gonna be a, a, a Twin Blaster or a uh, or a Murdoch here. So. It is going to be so. Greystone picked up. Rambrill's on that. Greystone is one of those off laners that I think, out of all the off laners, with maybe the exception of Sereth, gets the most value out of like being ahead. Like he just can do so much damage when he gets ahead and farm. Yeah, the, the, we were talking about this yesterday. Greystone just does Greystone things. Yeah, yeah no, right. It's, it's, he lives in his own world. It's just such a chore to have to go and deal with him in lane when he's pushing your lanes and doing those split pushes. I've got it. You know, he can chunk me, especially if you build him crit and you get him hitting for those. When he, those crits come off and they're hitting you for 400 per auto, he's got a little bit of attack speed. He's quite tanky from his natural ability. Plus, uh, you know, you build a little bit of tanker into uh, him, uh, especially good. with those order, I think. Those, those, those order cards. Nerder! Um, you're, you're good. Keep going. Oh. You're good. No, you're good. You're good. Uh, it's... 
Yeah, if if you're watching uh, the stream, you'll see why uh, here in a minute. Can finish your finish your point. <laughs> uh, so there was older cards where you're allowed to build um, durability. Oh dear, <laughs> Do <you laughs> durability <see it? laughs> with that crit. Yeah, I see it now. Um, so it's just you know it's just a chore to deal with, and that's why I think it's still a good pick, even with all the CC involved. Uh, I've been, I actually thought it would go the other way, but I, I've been proved wrong now. And um, sorry, I just can't get around this this drafting order. The, the, the double gray stone. <laughs> we're we're back to mirrors, dude. I don't know if you heard it. We 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 no guys. There's just a a display bug inside of our the the tool we use to draft right there. We'll <laughs> we'll figure out if that's what actually uh, was picked up here. So okay. So actually, the the drafts here that Countess was a real pick. I, I just loaded up the uh, replay to take a look at it. So for Rat Pack, it's Severog, Imsk. Uh, I just said Imsko over Sparrow. That's how synonymous Imsko is of that hero now, apparently. <laughs> Severog, uh, Sparrow, Decker, Gadget, and Greystone is on the side of Rat Pack. And yes. the offlaner for, uh, it looks like Ram Riddles is actually on Countess, and Aurora was picked up. It's going to be a support Aurora, it appears. This is really cool. But we'll show you guys the draft here in just a minute. We're going to load in this replay. I'm going to do my production things as we get this all underway here. But uh, so... Um, it's going to be a support Aurora. When Aurora first came out, specifically, I was watching Marty. I was watching his replays on support Aurora, and it was really, it looked really, really good. This is my first time I've actually been able to cast Aurora in the support role, though. Uh, yeah, I'm surprised Meds has let him have this Aurora. <laughs> um, and I know he does definitely doubt on her, but, you know, I'm always happy to see a Meds on Steel because that's just as just as good to watch yeah and ram riddles on on the, the countess uh yeah <laughs> i like that Thank because you. he just tends to he's really aggressive on the countess and you're big of stacking into those adamant edges like you wouldn't believe <laughs> <laughs> that's what we expect though man we, we you know <laughs> back when uh before honor the pure uh had the internal cooldown uh associated with it you know everyone was like oh reborn is just or just it's reborn you know honor the reborn at that point in time, and I'm afraid Oxygen is going to be known as the team of Adamant Edges. But I mean, it's a really good card. It's damage and health. What else? What else could you possibly ask for? Right, especially <laughs> especially on heroes who don't need any other stat other than power, sort of like Bellica or Gadget. Like they just want power. Like yeah, they get a little value out of maybe Mana Regen or things like that. But really, the main thing they want is just the increase in their damage here. But we're going to begin into this game here in just a moment. Here, overall, the drafts. Taking a look at them here again. I got to ask you, uh, I, I, who? who this Countess pick, here we don't see very often. And to be honest, the only times we've seen Countess, it's been on, I mean, just being brutally honest here, lesser teams. This is the first time I've seen a top four team pick Countess in this sort of situation. I've seen Ram Riddles pick her up once, and he did work on that. He actually, last time he picked up a Necroveil uh, and Ooh, stacked yeah. all his penetration into it. So he got a lot of, uh, so he's hitting for true damage all the time. Uh, he would run in, get the pick up, get the kill, uh, go into stealth, get out, get regen. Do you know while he's waiting for the regen to tick up from uh, from his passive, get back, go into lane, as if nothing happened. And he, he did that all through the game, and it was so good to watch. So I'm expecting more of the same. I'm really, really... I, I've been a fan of Countess dating back to where... I, I was very privileged where I actually got to go over to Epic, and I saw Countess in a very, very early state before she was even released. This was way back, and I saw her kit, and I was like, I want that hero so bad! And I've always been a fanboy of her, <laughs> and I can't wait to see her played at this level on a hero of this caliber of Ram Riddles right here, right now. But I'm in five seconds, Nate. Let's get this game underway. Let's see if Rat Pack can get themselves back into shape and strike back and bring this to a game number three in five, four, three, two, one. A go-go is the show show. Let's introduce these guys. We're going to have Crown on Severog, Strafe on Sparrow, Lucere on Decker, Gadget being played by Involve, and Bum on the Greystone. This is Rat Pack's last hope. Yeah, and on the team uh, Oxygen NA, we have Arsenic on the Howitzer, Mighty Rivia on the Aurora, Imsco on the Murdoch, Ram Riddles on that Countess, and Meds on the Steel. So let's talk about this Countess specifically in the offlane here, Nate. Countess, her her mobility is her, her her slip is entirely reliant on there being a target to have around. So whether that's a hero or whether that's a minion, she's not like a Greystone or a Fang Mao where you can just use it on demand. So when it comes to that, there is definitely an ability to exploit that that she doesn't have that on demand mobility. There, there sort of has to be uh, the creep around or something like that. Do you think we're gonna see a p potential? exploitation of countesses in the early parts because she she is pretty easy to to handle in the early stages before she gets level five and has that ultimate online i think if it's a 1v1 situation you're fine because she what she'll do is she will port to you even if you're stood next to her it also applies a slow 
So she'll port next to you, then start running off. As you're chasing her with that slow, you have to make the decision, are you going to chase her or are you going to sit next to her, her slip, uh, the image she leaves behind? And he will use that to either, if you chase him, he'll go back to his image. If not, he'll just carry on running. Nate, so real quick, real quick, my man, let's pause at uh, 135 because I have the bug with the... Um, I already did mine. You already did yours? <laughs> okay, okay, cool. Yeah. We're, we're going to go back to our ugly mugs really quick here. Uh, hello, stream. How are you? Welcome, Nate. I got to say, I, I, I feel like I'm the only person now in the PCL that doesn't have a good beard game. Now, Pith and I, <laughs> yeah, Pith and I are the baby faces. Everyone else has got the beard game on point, so we got to start maybe. I mean, I this is me when I haven't shaved in a week, so this is why I don't have a beard, man. It's, it's not quite as good as <laughs> I, I have to I have to grow it in because otherwise, um, yeah, it's eighty percent of my sexiness is in my beard. So. <laughs> that's that's where you get all your power from. <laughs> Nazgul gets his power from his bandana. Imsco gets power from potatoes. You get your power from your beard. I think that's just a, a common trend right here. All right, I'm at one thirty five. I'm ready to go. You get my man. All right, five, four, three, two, one, go. We got names and we got health bars. There we go. Look at Imsco already. The R and Jesus picking up the uh, red uh, the red Murdoch skin. That's, uh, that's pretty dope. He's already styling that thing. It's only been out for like a week, if that. <laughs> yeah, quite. I don't think they're quite as good as the Grug skins, but obviously, if you're a Murdoch main, you know you're going to be picking those up. And uh, I do, I do like, I do like the skin, but the the reshades, I'm not. A fan. I still like the original, I think. So I, I mean, I just, I want to, I want to watch Countess. I'm, I'm, such, I'm, I'm gonna try not to, fan, I'm not I'm gonna try not to fanboy too much. Oh, it's even Ramrodels <laughs> on Countess. I can't wait to see the build, especially if it's a Necro Veil. And Necro Veil is not a card we see very often. Um, I've used it uh, back on Legacy with uh, dating myself again at the Taurino build of Grim, uh, where you would just get Necroveil on Grim and just win the game uh, every time you got his ult off there. But her ultimate is just is kill secured. That ultimate may as well just be called kill secured. Uh, it does so much burst damage, and you're going to get that last. And that, I think really right now, Countess is one of the few heroes, if not the only hero, who actually can get. Can get consistent valuable consistent value rather out of that necro veil because of her kit uh yeah i mean the, the reason because uh rat pack have allowed them to have the steel in the jungle allows them to have sort of a less uh tanky offlaner or you know what we, right we yeah say as an offlaner as, as we see them playing this double duo mid in the now and their composition but uh you still got to have that heavy. You've got to have at least a frontliner and be right. able to have that steal, that good initiation in the jungle, as allowed them to pick up this um, this counter in this offlane. So, I think if we'd have seen the, the steel band out, we probably wouldn't have seen this composition. So Marty Rivia on the support Aurora, um, her kit is just so extraordinarily strong. I don't know how she scales with damage. I know she she can do significant amount of like auto attack damage if yeah. you build her build her that way, but she's not necessarily the tankiest person. Very difficult to track down and kill, even with the CC-centric meta that is in the game right now. Aurora played in the put in the right hands can be really difficult to deal with. Um, but I'm excited to see how we're going to see her run in the support role. But more importantly, the deck that Marty has built, is this going to be more of a utility deck? Are we going to see activatable cards? Or is he just basically going to be a fourth damage member in these team fights when he gets to a certain point? I think well, the, the good thing about seeing like Aurora and a Rampage, you can build them as more of a... You build them as a support at first, but they transition into a hero that can do its own thing towards the end game. Right. We're probably going to see sort of Chrono Tonic, so get the cooldown on that really impactful all early game, but then transition to a little bit of damage uh, late game. And another thing I think uh, that is good for Rat Pack is they don't have the Aurora Horfrost into Subjugate, which we actually saw Rat Pack themselves pull out yesterday in Group A, the uh, the Severog and the Aurora. It, it's just it's such a good combination, but that's not going to be <laughs> happening in this case around this uh, time around here. Crown on yeah. Severog, uh, he plays a damn good Severog. I mean, I would I would say it's on par with the other known Severog players. So yeah. we're going to see if he's going to be more of a... F the thing about Severog in the jungle, though, is you can play him one of two ways, and that is either the gank-oriented way, where you're just constantly roaming, or the more farm-based oriented, and getting up your stacks. And I'm so glad that we we have heroes who enable that sort of stylistic differences between each player. Both have advantages and disadvantages. We'll see which one Crown decides to go with here. Rotating over the five-minute mark, give him the blue buff, and now looking to get aggressive around the green buff as well. They've caught out Strafe, but he's got to be careful because now Crown is here as well. Marty pursuing, skipping right by uh, Crown and more so going for the priority target of Strafe. Subjugate is there to isolate and to provide Strafe. 
safety. But they continued to chase. We talked about this in game number one. They never really did this early on, but now Team Oxygen is getting very, very aggressive. Bum is level five, I believe. So Greystone is here and all of the strength. The piercing arrow through the wall is gonna be the death of Howitzer. So it's Oxygen who are on the aggressiveness here, but it's actually Rat Pack who end up finding the kill. Not for none though, not for nil. Strafe does end up going down for Frost to try to isolate. Now Bum's gotta be careful here. He doesn't have any really reliable means of CC to pursue. And sure, he does have his Reforge online, but he's got to make sure he doesn't get taken out. So, a one-for-one one exchange uh, already. I think Rat Pack, uh, I mean, they got the kill. They countered the aggression. They gave up Strafe for it right now, but that's not the biggest deal in the world. To me, that just shows that Strafe already sort of has a game plan, and they rotated when they should have. Uh, yeah. If what you were saying is true, if they like this early aggression, they're now playing to their strengths. Yeah. Getting in and disrupting in that jungle, trying to get those picks. Uh, Bum picking up the green, I believe, there as well. And this is the thing with the Greystone. When you're just sort of duo laning against him, he's, you know, up until level four, you think, right, we're going to maybe bully him, etc. He gets that all, it becomes such a different monster to deal with. Um, just uh, as soon as you know you got to kill the guy twice and he's just chunking you because yeah. usually a lot of builds we see out of the Greystone uh, is like triple Madstone gem into that flash fire piston and that's a lot of damage he's putting into you and also is um, I can't remember the name of the move now the orange tornado um, oh, that it goes is, around it it's his, uh, the Q you're talking about that is that, known as make way make way that's it I was going to say assault the gates but that's wrong it takes a lot of damage off you. So if you just sit in that, people are really reluctant to sit in that basically lawnmower coming towards them. Right. Because uh, he will take chunks out of you all day and then you've got to kill him twice and then you get caught in his snare. He does a, a bit of damage when he drops back down as well. So, uh, yeah, very, very uh, awkward hero to attack, basically. The good old uh, Sparrow, or I'm sorry, the uh, support carry versus support carry here. Lucere does have the stealth buff, so... Maybe a stun could potentially get something going here. You better believe that the guys of Oxygen are like, hey guys, purple buff was picked up. So I'm I'm very ex just I, I wanna see what Marty does, how you play a support Aurora differently than an aggro Aurora here. Over on the other side of the map, Crown has found Ram Riddles. Subjugate, I think it must be on cooldown, so Ram Riddles was able to either dodge that or just outright missed. If Subjugate was to land right there, that should have been an easy kill, but Simply not the case, and uh, Countess is going to continue to get away. Countess is a massive late-game threat here, Nate. That's one oh, yeah, thing yeah. people don't really realize about her is she's good in the mid-game, don't get me wrong, but if she can get the her the amount of damage that her ultimate does compared to the health pools of carries, and even non-carries, even if you are building tanky, even if you are a stealer or Severog, it's a massive, ridiculous amount of burst damage that comes out of Countess here. And Ramirals is known as being as one of the best, most resourceful farmers in the game. Ramirals could just almost, this could be essentially like a carry Countess if things get out of hand and they don't respect the late game threat that is Countess. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, a lot of Countess players, they'll, they'll build that 30 points of uh, ability penetration. So they're usually going in on true damage on most heroes. I think the right. Rangers have a, that, obviously a little bit more um, uh, auto attack armor, but not ability armor. Yeah. So they're going to hit for yeah. true damage and she hits for so much. And even if not, she's going to use her all of the abilities to finish you off. Because, um, uh, you know, her Q is nothing to be sniffed at either. You know, you're going to see that in for four or five hundred at a time as well. So even if you do survive the ult, you're probably not getting away from the other abilities. She's... So guys, yes, I got that. Excellent, excellent. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. Uh, should have sent that to you early. That's okay. Mez uh, getting a little bit of uh, just eh, just doesn't want to deal with Crown. Crown's just like showing up and hey, what's up? I wonder if we're gonna see Raptors taking a little bit more. Already, both of these teams have so shown signs of more early game aggression than we saw in game number one, which I'm all about as a caster. You always want to see guys going after <laughs> each other's throats uh, constantly, but. There definitely is a sort of poetic beauty in more slower paced games where you win through just out you outthinking your opponent. I love seeing that. Sure, it's a little bit more slow paced. You know, the game can go a little bit longer from a viewer perspective, and it might not be the most friendly thing in the world, but when you see a team win in as decisively as they have, just by outthinking and outmaneuvering your opponent, that's scary to see if you're any other team, especially if you're carbon watching, trying to see who you're gonna face up against the finals. Seeing that they're able to win off of just maneuvering and, and, and being so cerebral and conservative, that's a scary thing to go up against a team who now if they switch that aggression over and they, they can win with aggression, which is where we're used to seeing, then that means Team's Oxygen is quite potentially one of the most versatile teams as far as strategy goes 
in all of Paragon. And I'd imagine with a Countess, that's not really a hero you pick to play conservative, right? That's a <laughs> that's a hero where you're like, all right, it's it's time to go kill some nerds. So I'd imagine at a certain point we're gonna see that trigger. But ever since they invaded the jungle and it didn't really work out too terribly for them, it was pretty much an even exchange. They have fallen back to the, what we saw in game number one. They're staying in their lanes. They're being a little bit more static and just saying, Rat Pack, we are confident that we can outfarm you. It's up to you to try to take these engagements. Yeah, I, I like an ex Oxygen and A a lot of the time to sort of a, a box like Floyd, Floyd Mayweather where he might not go for the flashy, I'm going to knock you out sort of right. fights. He will just win on points. He'll just grind you down and win on points throughout the match. And it's never the flesh, and some people can complain about those sort of matches. However, you can't argue about his technical expertise and how he right. goes about doing that. Or the uh, Ronda Rousey route, where you either win or lose <laughs> in the first 15 seconds. Either way, <laughs> either way. <laughs> uh, we did. We cut the uh, tail end there of Ram Riddles getting the kill over on to Gadget, and Volve gets taken out there. I'd imagine that was just a... Uh, well, just hit the series of buttons he needed to. The, the Shadow Slip to get the Snare. The Feast of Ultimate as well as the Shadow Wave. It's just so much damage going down right there. And looking, uh, we're at about the 12-minute mark here. This is generally when I like to take a look at the economics. Come on, you are. Don't let me down. All right, we did it. We're looking at it here. The CS, pretty close here, Nate. It's It's been a very, ever since that invasion of the jungle, has been pretty passive here. So, uh, I mean, pretty much as expected, Madstone Gems and Adamant Edges for everyone join the party. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they definitely like these uh, Madstone gems, but it's such a powerful card. I mean, they're just they're the right Brown stats from what you want. caught out by the Horfrost. He is going to be able to get away just in the nick of time, but now we see Rat Pack are the ones invading the strong side of Oxygen's jungle. Maybe looking for... I, I'm not sure if that was just a timing or if they caught someone out. I did see that Howitzer was forced to use Make It Rain very, very quickly, so maybe it was just, hey, here's a Howitzer. Let's see if we can get a pick off. Not the case. Not much going there. Uh... And didn't find the green buff. They fell back, didn't push the issue. And back to the status quo. These guys continue just to farm to their heart's content. Yeah, just having a quick look at Marty's build. He has actually gone into uh, a little bit of damage with that Madstone Gem. It's very similar to his uh, Rampage build, where he builds a Sage as well with all health, picks up the health token, uh, and listen to him for when he streams why he does that, rather than, say, versus the healer token. Uh, he likes to be able to take a few more shots from the tower to allow his carry to put more damage into the tower. There you go. Involve might get taken out here again. Oh, the Shadow Wave barely missed. Involve's low. Does he have it? This could go wrong for Ram Riddles. They both get taken out at the same time right there. So he does get the kill and the uh, double KO right there, if you will. But, uh, I mean, if if I'm involved right there, that that kill was only allowed to happen because Ram Riddles took, like, four tower shots. If that's not underneath the tower, he's going to lose that 1v1 uh, every single time. Every single time, <laughs> especially as Countess ramps up and starts to really hit her power spike. Over on the other side, the green buff invasion continues to happen here. Looks like Strafe was able to go in there, and they were able to snipe the green buff out from Oxygen. So, yeah, Rat Pack definitely showing much more signs of life here, Nate, than we saw in game number oh, yeah. one, and I'm very, very happy to see that. Yeah, I'm definitely. Yeah, they're playing to the strengths. They, I think they played a little bit too passively last game, uh, maybe showing a little bit too much respect for him, but this time they think, right, we're going to invade your jungle, we're going to put pressure on you and see how you react to our pressure rather than vice versa. Not much of a response here in the mid lane. It's just Emsco hanging out. Marty just now rotating. We do see Crown maybe wrapping around, potentially not going to be the case. He was just sort of looping around right there. Ram Riddles, more adamant edges. Oh, that's no surprise to anyone. <laughs> uh, Arsenic, of course, he's going with the Madstone Gems. Yeah, it's just pretty, not much to talk about on the deck for a deck build here. Uh, it's just going to be just a straight raw power. I think the biggest thing I want to see here, other than the Countess build, if we are going to see a Necro Veil build, which would be so sick, it would be so nasty, it would be so dope is if uh, Strafe is going to go crit or not on to Sparrow. In your experience here, Nate, for Sparrow, ha have you seen more crit-based builds where it's like a slow ramp-up of crit, like the you know six-point Spear or the Rift Hunter, uh, and then you replace that, you get your life steal and your crit bonus, and then build up crit? Or has it been much more emphasis on building into uh, the strength of her passive Relentless and just going attack speed and power? I've seen both builds, uh, to be fair. I know that sounds like a bit of a cop-out. However, I've seen the straight <laughs> damage build more because they want to make the best out of that piercing shot because it's yep. such a good executor tool and see it hitting for like maybe four or five hundred at a time. Right. Um, I think oh, both. Well, Rammer did go. the thing again. He, he did the thing again. <laughs> I, feel, I feel like at this point, now that Involve has died three times to Ram Riddles 1v1, 
I'm saying, guys, I'm going to need some help or we need to reconfigure the lanes or something. Crown should be able to pick up this kill unless Ramrills just does some fantastic playing. There's not much mana here, and he is able to dodge with the Shadow Slip. One more auto attack should be enough. The Shield Slam is there. Crown might actually go down. He does. Ramrills lives. Meds being the good brother. And are able to is able to protect Ramrills, and Ramrills stays alive. And another thing that a lot of people discount on Countess for sustainability is the health she gets back um, for her. So she actually has really good intrinsic lane sustain on top of the fact that she has that healer token. So um, even though she was very, very low, you already see her health bar spiking back up right there. Yeah, he's actually maxed out that Blade Siphon as well. So he's pr priority on that Blade Siphon to get the most back when he does secure those kills on both heroes and minions. So in an off lane, that's not surprising. He's a lot of people actually emphasize the Q and getting most out of the wave clear. But he's gone the other way where he just makes magic to stay. Well, that was a pretty straightforward kill right there. Uh, a Sparrow got caught up by Horror Frost and died. That's the summarization of what happened right there. They're looking for more. Marty getting aggressive. He uses the Horror Frost, not going to land. So this area is going to be able to get away. But still, they picked up a very key priority target on the Sparrow. Bum has just now rotated very late to the party. Not going to be able to really do much of anything at all. Greystone Hero traditionally isn't a hero you don't expect much out of. He just pretty much farms in lane up until a certain point, and when the lane phase is over, that's when he starts becoming much of an impact. So, uh, no surprise that Bum didn't do much of anything at that point in time. Though, with that being said, he's got to make sure that when he does, when his moment is there and he is in a team fight, he's got to make sure that he's cutting down the targets and he's able to stick onto those targets, supplemented by the CC of his teammates. I think what it is, uh, usually you, you got Greystone against like a very static uh, carry, so like something like a Sparrow or something. Yep. You just run at them and do damage them. But obviously how it's a different beast, he's got so much self-peel. As we see him go around to him there, use the mine, knock him away, dab done with it. So, you know, going against a how it's is such a different beast and it's so much more difficult for that Greystone to get onto rather than a, a, an ADC and his support. Right, and uh, been doing a very good job with that thus far. So far, so, yeah, Marty's building a little bit more damage. He's going into the amulet of the, I'm sorry, not the amulet of the veteran, the uh, elder mage amulet. And again, Ram Riddle's just, I feel like at this point, if you shouldn't even talk about it, it's like, oh, yeah, another kill to involve. I, I think Rat Pack needs to do something about this here, Nate. They need to maybe reconfigure their lanes, maybe switch Greystone and Gadget. I think Greystone actually would do fairly well up against Ram yeah. At least Ram Riddle's can only alt him once. You know, he, he has two lives there. Um, and then Gadget against Howitzer, I think, would be much more even of a matchup there. But maybe stubbornness coming out of either Involve or Rat Pack, or they're just waiting on a certain timing to try to punish this. But uh, right no, now, Ramon is just, now. Yeah, he's just running away with this lane, just absolutely dominating it. Involve has had nothing going for him. Yeah, I think Evolve's had enough, and that um, Bum's actually come across now, so I think we're going to see him take over this lane. Like I said, I think it's much better matchup. They probably should have done this earlier, because even if she puts all that burst out to hit the Greystone, even though she does do the damage, she doesn't take it so well. So after that ult comes back down, takes a load off that, and then starts just chunking her after that, you know, the, the Countess won't get that HP back because it's not a kill. Right. So it's a different beast to deal with. So uh, I think this is this is a very good lane swap. And obviously the gadget against the house is pretty useful as well. Crown gets hit by the shield slam. Ram Riddles preserving the shadow wave. They get the kill. Crown has been hanging out around these raptors by himself for a long, long time. And I think it was just a matter of time before Oxygen figured that out or just happened to be at the right place at the right time and pick up yet another kill. And they're looking to pursue over to straight. The cryo used by Marty is going to secure that kill. He's going to jump up and secure yet another kill right there. So very quickly, three go down for Rat Pack. And uh, this is a window for Oxygen. More than likely going to be able to pick up this tower. And uh, the game at first, very aggressive, and has gone back to what we saw in game number one. And again, I feel like Rat Pack, that, that is not where, Rat Pack does not thrive in a slow-paced game. They thrive when they're able to get aggressive, they're invading, they're, they're using timings around the river buff and around the green buff. And they simply aren't doing that. Maybe it's because they don't feel confident enough against Oxygen to be able to do that successfully. Involve is going to be able to kill on the meds underneath the tower there, but I think Arsenic, as long as, he, as long as he plays this right, should be able to pick up a kill. Involve is trying to do what he can. It's just a matter of time before that rocket comes off the cooldown. He actually misses it, though. So now Involve uh, staying alive much longer than normal. Marty's here. There we go. Arsenic, he, he was able to finally hit him with the uh, couple auto attacks to bring him down right there. But all the meanwhile, there we go. <laughs> There's that. That's what we're talking about. Bum actually yeah. doesn't have <laughs> Reforged. So that was a 1v1. He did win the 1v1. Greystone won the 1v1 barely. 
So finally, someone was able to put a stop to Ram Riddles just walking all over that lane. And that's a really important kill, not only because they, Ram Riddles ha maybe have to respect that lane a little bit more, but more importantly, Bum just got a big infusion of card experience right there, Nate. Yeah, I think that's that's such a better matchup for Rat Pack. Just, uh, I, I was watching that 1v1 uh, while you were talking about the other fight going off and just seeing how that was going. Um, he managed to get out of the uh, the reforge coming back down, but then went back in thinking he could kill Bum, but Bum just took chunks out of him and uh, managed to get... He did take Bum very low, don't get me wrong. I think yeah, it was, was close. Points, but he, uh, it, Bum managed to get the job done. And with that infusion, that CXP, just able to, you know, Bump up that damage output even more. He's got into the, the Mad Stones, into the Flash Fire. So that's what we expected as well. So um, this this Greystone build very dangerous if you if you if you keep going pressing the mat and trying to force yeah. those fights onto him. Picked up the gold buff, so even more card experience is gonna go his way. We do see that lane minions just doing what they do, so the off lane has fallen there. For oxygen, not the biggest deal in the world. Um, 20 minutes in. I mean generally if if it's the <laughs> the support plus the carry in that lane sometimes you see it go down as early as five to ten minutes but it's yeah. not like getting that is grants this massive amount of map control you maybe can invade uh, it gives a little bit more uh, a control of the raptors over to rat pack but even then it's still not the uh, it's not like oxygen is gonna be like oh we lost so they should be okay it's just a matter of time before that goes down here let's take a look at the numbers uh nate because uh there hasn't been much else going on strafe is at 26 to imsco's <laughs> 13 <laughs> no <laughs> Imsco's not at 13, guys. Imsco's not at 13. All the, see, we start talking about numbers, and Bum goes down on the other side of the field, and imagine he did not have reforged up from that last engagement. Meds was there, so they're going to pick up a kill and yet another Tier 1 tower. Mid-Tier uh, 1 tower is uh, still alive here. It is not. That was taken out a little bit earlier. So map control slowly but surely being restricted. And game number two is starting to look more and more like game number one here. Marty has collapsed around Involve, uses the Cryo onto him, Tesla Dome. Marty's just going to be able to jump right out of that here. I'm not sure if Marty can get this kill, even if he was to land that Horfrost. Actually, with Imsco around the corner, potentially, but at least Involve was able to get something out of that. They were able to pick up a tower and are getting something on the map there, but still map control and full uh, over to Oxygen. Uh, yeah, um, the one thing I just want to point out is, uh, um, so I can't pronounce his name, Luisia? Is is it, I right? don't know if it's Luis or if it's Lucer. I've heard both. Lucer. He's actually picked up the purity sensors to actually try and counteract that um, Aurora ult to try and like make it less impactful. But uh, I don't think he's, I don't think you've seen it the two times that Marty's popped it off. I don't think he's had the time to actually use it yet. So or I haven't seen the effects being negated as yet. So, uh, but Ape sinking eight points as a support into that item. It is worth it in some some respects, but it's eight points you just sunk into it. So, especially yeah. on a support where it takes you so long to get you those uh, eight CXP. Yeah, because... exactly. It's, and it's a ninety second cooldown, which Cryo yeah. at level thirteen I think is a sixty second cooldown. So, um, as of right now, it's very. I mean, it's always going to be valuable, but there's going to be times where even if you're the most efficient person in the world using it, there's going to be windows for the for Marty, like a player of his caliber to know, okay, Puri's on cooldown, and I can get this off. Or, Decker's nowhere to be found, and I can get this here. So, Ramrodos and Bum going at each other. Does use the Feast. Didn't pop the Reforge. At very minimum, Ramrodos was hoping to put that long cooldown of Bum's ultimate uh, to potentially pick him off later on in between that. Not going to be the case. But even then, he still forces Bum out of the lane. Ramrodos continues to farm, and Bum's is losing out on farm. Oxygen grouping up around the Amber Link here, maybe looking for a green buff steal. And looking for a kill. That would be nice if that was to be the case. And Rat Pack just uh, not doing much about it. They're going to fall back and continue to try to get something going here. Oh, yeah. Sorry. The other thing on the Purity Sensor, just what I think on as well. They've got to save that between uh, the ult from Aurora and also the steel if they don't want the knock up to it. Yeah, as well. So, Same thing, yeah. You know, that 90 second cooldown is now split between two heroes. You've got to think, pick your, pick your time is very careful for that, I think, right now. Raptor's finally being taken here, and it's well as uh, one of them was taken with the gold buff, so no contention whatsoever from Rat Pack. And, I mean, what can they do? Their lanes are constantly pushed in. They haven't had any symbols of map control this entire time. And uh, economically, they're just going to start falling behind now that they don't have any sort of semblance, vision, control, reconnaissance over of that uh, Raptor's here. Riverbus about to spawn at the 25-minute mark. Hoping for double purple. Come on, double purple. Uh, only one, only one. That's okay. Marty's going to be able to pick that up. <laughs> purple on Aurora actually can be very, very threatening here. 
especially if he's able to isolate the uh, strafe on that sparrow. We'll see if he's able to get anything going. At very minimum, he'll be able to scout some wards out and uh, try to de-ward the rat pack for, uh, if they have vision around that ward prime. That's exactly what he's going to be look looking to doing here. He has his eyes on strafe, but they know about it. The ward is there, and he's going to be able to get away. I actually missed the jump. Uh, I don't know how that happened, so he's going to have to glitch <laughs> charge away. But he still is able Thank God that Aurora has two getaways, else that may have been very, very bad. It's one of the things about Aurora as a hero. Um, you can, like, if you're playing as a fighter, it's always good to build a little bit of durability with a bit of health and a bit of armor. But because she's so slippery, you can build a little bit more damage because you can afford, you can get out of those situations where you would take a lot of damage and you would need that mitigation. So uh, that, I mean, I think that's why I like her so much as a character. When she's got more escape than say a Kalari, you know, oh, right. a, a definite bonus. <laughs> I forget about you. You said Kalari, and I was Kalari. I was like, wait, who? Uh, oh, okay, that one <laughs> hero that uh, I'm still waiting. I, I I still am waiting for for people to like it's like to realize Kalari is like oh it's like all of a sudden comes out as like a total sleeper hero and uh, able to do something like that. We've only seen her once. Does Bum know that? Yeah, this is, okay, yeah. Uh, <laughs> for the longest time, Bum was just like running away here, trying to do what he can. And now Bum is deep in enemy territory. The ultimate is used to pop the reforge, and now with meds here, this should be a pretty easy kill to pick up, barring some sort of miracle from Bum. So, uh, an overextension from Bum to pushing this tower. Storm the gates is used, but there's a shadow slip. Meds punches him in his face. No Greystone on the field. A reprisal kill is what Rat Pack is looking for into Arsenic. Should be able to get this. Stasis Bomb's gonna land, and Strafe gets the kill. So, Rat Pack, they give up one, but they do take another. So they are showing signs of keeping themselves in this game. Game number one, they're able to keep up economically. Let's see if that's still the case here, Nate. Talk to us about the current state of this game. So we see uh, Oxygen NA are on 633 CS to 558. So, you know, that, that gap opening up there. But I think what the real telling thing is, uh, Ram Riddles is actually on 46 CXP. Wow. 46. That's, ri that's ridiculous. <laughs> he has 200 C Just him, he has 200 CS. Just, yeah. just ram riddles. That's ridiculous, uh, man. Now I don't, I don't know if he's in front of Imsco because I can't actually see his CXP. But failing that, he is, you know, he's head and shoulders above everyone else in the yeah. game right now. And this is what happens when you can leave, you know, when you leave him uncontested. And I think Rat Pack have not done enough early enough um, switching over the Greystone and the um, the gadget. Yeah. I think they should have done early, giving him four free kills without sort of response. It uh, just allowed him, you know, count us. One of those heroes, if you get ahead, you can just stay ahead. Complete snowball. A, yeah, and you're such a threat to the enemy ADC. That they're just going to be expending so much to keep her off of him that the rest of the option uh, uh, NA can do that damage. Yeah, so oh, Ramrodo's literally hit two buttons and got the kill right there. You guys saw the strength. The Feast Alt did about half of the health, an auto attack or two. Uh, and that's uh, that, that's all they needed right there, man. And then the uh, Dark Tide used, or I'm sorry, the, the uh, Blade Siphon used. And then he just goes and he gets another kill on the Sparrow. No problem, no problem here, nothing to see. Move along, team. Just a Ram Riddles being a count, uh, carry Countess. Bum is gonna get caught out. He has that Reforge online, but you can't be reckless with the utilization of this. Actually, no, he doesn't have that Reforge online. He gets taken out right away, I'd imagine. Uh, I thought there would have been up, but nonetheless. Three go down, Ram Merrill's just said, all right, I'm tired of farming here, Nate. Nate, I'm tired of farming. <laughs> it's time to get this game going and get ourselves into the finals, and that's the path they're on to. Assuming Rat Pack does not get themselves back into this, because they have just been slowly losing. Meds pushing down the Tier 2 tower, tanking it up. They should be able to take this down here. Greystone down for 50 seconds. Ultimate actually does not land and involve. Meds goes in, whips the ult. Stasis Gym avoids the damage. And meds keep himself alive. Crown win for the horde frost is providing meds. Somewhat meds should just okay. There he goes. Finally gets taken out right there. That was just great peel. They had to put a lot more resources here. Comes Ramrodels. Does he have that ultimate line? He doesn't have mana. Has to be very very careful. That's the thing about Countess. She's 100% reliant on her mana pool. Stasis bomb is going to hit and is going to allow Lucera to get away here. But still, this is uh, just more and more like game number one. Ramrodels came in there, got two easy peasy kills. Now they're gonna fall back. They can get Raptors, pick up a red buff. Uh, I want to see I want to see Ram Riddles at 60 card points with pure true damage get a red buff and just one shot someone that that would be a pleasure <laughs> to see I would love to that would be a, a and that's totally potentially could happen with the current state of the game 
yeah, it's just it's built so much damage. He's got so far ahead now. I think anyone he comes into contact with now is pretty much dead. Uh, as long as he has the mana. Uh, that's the one downside with the, with this hero. She's very mana intensive. Um, so he can only stay out as long as that mana pulls so above sort of about a fifth. Otherwise, he's just not effective. Because yeah. even though she's one of the higher scaling casters uh, at 0.5 on her auto attacks, uh, she's a melee caster at the end of the right. day. So you don't want to be in that position where you're just sat auto attacking somebody. Looking at the build for Marty on the support Aurora, something, again, we have not seen before. Is it's a it's it's pretty much a well-rounded build here. He has a little bit of health with the Elder Mage amulet and supplemental damage. Same with the Sage's Ward. Uh, has the Madstone Gem for uh, primary damage there, and then tank ability with the Tempered Plate as well as the Barrier of Will. So this is pretty much just a really well-rounded build. And for a hero like Aurora, I think that plays very well into her kit with the way she scales. Um, I really like this build coming out of Marty. And to be honest, I'm surprised we don't see more support Aurora. Now, is Support Aurora relegated or delegated rather to where you only pick that up if it, you, if you're going to be able to put her in the mid lane with the carry, or is she flexible enough to put her in the safe lane versus the the one v two situation? Because I feel like she could thrive there as well and create gank opportunities with Orfrost. Um, I think Aurora, that she's she's fine in safe lane. Uh, she's fine in the off lane. She's fine in jungle. I think she's one of those heroes. That's so the kit's so versatile. You can pretty much put away. You're right. To, uh, other than ABC, obviously. Um, but I won't, you know, <laughs> I won't put it past these players playing her in there. Um, <laughs> yeah. Obviously, zoning just from just from Ram Riddles. Wow, the other uh, the other members of the he's, he's literally one before him. Okay, he's not gonna one before. Okay, he went in one before <laughs> Ram Riddles. Even even a count is that far ahead and a player of the caliber of Ram Riddles. He gets taken out, but still, the main focus there was ensuring the Orb Prime was taken. msco has got hit by the Subjugate. There's not much follow-up there. The Cryo has been used only onto Crown, so Purity Center's not going to get much value. The big three-man shield slam onto Strafe. Beautifully executed right there, but where's the follow-up? Strafe is gone, does not go down, and actually, Mez gets taken out. They zoned out the Countess, but they picked up the Orb Prime of 4v5, and this is not looking good at all for Oxygen. Maybe getting feeling a little bit too cocky there was Ram Riddles. Just saying, be like, hey guys, I'll zone him out. But this is, uh, despite the fact they have the War Prime, this is not looking good. Marty comes over, uses the Horfurst onto Lucer. Lucer gets the kill, the Stasis Bomb onto Marty. Bum's trying to chop him down. Marty, if he has that up, might be able to pick up a kill. There was a long arm of the law there for Imsko as he spawned. So he does get the kill, but still, that essentially is a, a rather Imsko popping up here very early. Uh, to keep himself alive, but Rat Pack finally gets something going there, but to be honest there, Nate, that wasn't Rat Pack making a big play, that was just a big mistake coming out from Oxygen, I feel. Yeah, I, <laughs> I don't think uh, Ram Riddles went into that 4v1 with the intention of trying to fight, I think he was just trying to sort of yeah <laughs> bait, bait something uh, while they secured, uh, but then I think Arsenic probably could have picked up a kill there, but it was caught in two mines. He actually blinked towards Strafe, but then saw um, the Severog in his like in, in the corner of his eye, went back towards that, got caught out again, and just because of the indecisiveness, ended up dying. I think uh, one, one R2000 missile there would have either killed Strafe yeah. um, or Ike around there. It was, it was a good alt by Meds. He recognized that there was the, the uh, opportunity to hit a lot of people with it. I thought for sure Strafe was going to go down, but narrowly, barely able to escape away. After the, uh, let's look at the aftermath here. And yeah, there's the Necro Veil. Uh, Ram Reynolds has, I'm assuming that is a Necro Veil. It is. And he's going with the four point Sinister Shocks. Yeah. So he's going to have, what is that going to give him? A total of, yeah, 32, uh, uh, quite a bit of pen is what he's going to have. 32 is the, it gives you that true damage, I believe. Um, but he also does have the Shadow Scroll as well. So uh, you call the man. So he's, he's, he's sitting on 24 right now. So I'm assuming to fill that, to round that up to the third. Uh, so he is hitting for that true damage. And yeah, that's when, that's when Countess, I mean, she's scary anyway. Yeah. But she's definitely scary now. I just I, now now all it needs is that red buff, man. Just I want to see. I just just for the sake of saying I, I, that it, that it, it can be a thing, I want to see Ram Riddles. It is at the expense of Rat Pack, uh, uh, the, one of the players of Rat Pack. I want to see Ram Riddles pick up the red buff, and just smash that R button as we like to say, and just it gets and, and gets a kill. We'll see if that'll ever happen. None, even without that, as you said, still very very threatening. And the mid lane push is going to ensue here. Let's push down the wall immediately. Steel alts into nothing. So there's a whiff right there. Containment fence underneath the core. Oxygen just going in there. Immediately takes out Strafe. Lucera's gonna be falling here next. A little bit more instance of damage. No, but they have to be so very careful. And Hib does go down. But man, was that an extension right there. 
from Oxygen. And even then, it doesn't matter. They're still taking the fight nonetheless. Arsenic is going to try to get away, but the Subjugate is going to land. And Rat Pack are trying to turn this around. Their carry is down. Imsko is still alive. He's going to try to do what he can here. He lays down the trap. If Crown runs into that. That could be the R2000 rocket. Arsenic coming down from the sky, keeping himself alive, and keeping himself in flight, literally and metaphorically. And the Punisher, boys, that's why he's known that the Peruvian powerhouse, the Potato, is going to get the kill. <laughs> And they get the inhibitor, and I thought that was a man. Did oxygen really? Re they were thirsty. I think that's the best way to put it. Oxygen was thirsty right there, Nate. They wanted those kills. <clears throat> this uh, Imsco and Arsenic really pe peeling well for each other. Then, um, you know, I think that I thought Crown was going to get the kill there. Imsco using the, the knockback just to push him away, giving that little bit of breathing space, and just really well played there from them. Um, they got a little bit thirsty. It paid off for them, but. Um, they obviously paid with quite a few of their lives there. <laughs> that probably could have been avoided. Uh, they probably could be able to pick, <laughs> that, pick up that inhibitor, but uh, Oxygen and A, they uh, are, are no stranger to putting on a good show. Uh, no. they, again, we talked about how very personable all those guys are, and a very la that, that laid-back sort of comms that you've talked about <laughs> sometimes can translate into like, hey, you want to dive the core? Yeah, sure. All right, let's do it. So, <laughs> nonetheless, like, sort of, just sort of jump around the map all the time. They also they always look really happy, just sort of hopping around the map. They're always jumping in Yeah, they're, they're <laughs> always always jumping. They're, you can look at the heat map of their keyboard, and the space bar is just gleaming red at that point in time. Uh, but even with that, uh, what you could call very big overextension from oxygen, they picked up the inhibitor. They still came out ahead in the fight, and uh, I just. I feel like we've said it time and time again, but it bears repeating. What can Rat Pack do in this situation? Before, they were they, it was one-to-one -one inhibitor, the mid inhibitor to the left lane inhibitor, but now that's not the case. They are behind an inhibitor. They've been behind in map control. Countess can clear out a wave in just a moment. One shadow wave and all the, our um, uh, dark tide, rather, and all of a sudden the wave is just gone. So they have all the mobility in the world. The Muriel's not no longer a factor, but they still have to deal with the pressure of Ramriel's constantly pushing in other lanes. Um, I think that the bonus for, for Rat Pack, and we've, we've already seen it in that uh, OP fight, they can win the team fights. Absolutely. They're, they're very yeah. capable of winning. So they don't have to be, be scared, but I think they just have to do a little bit more about managing their lanes and being more careful how they pick their engagements because we've seen that they can win and uh, make oxygen pay when they overextend which they have done a few times so uh, i think they just have to stick to the game plan and just keep their head down uh, they're a little bit high farm maybe draw this game out a little bit longer and catch up with their oxygen yeah, they have the strength of containment fence and tesla and yeah. you have to respect that There's, if you get caught in the containment fence you could just outright lose the team fight M still gets hit with a stasis bomb. He's going to take a little bit of damage. Uh, just kidding. He's, well, that's probably a display book. That's okay, because he's also level 5 and only at 13 card points. Uh, but he did take some damage. <laughs> he's from he's the, not immortal. Yeah. <laughs> he's going to take some damage there. Does, does Imsko have... I'd imagine he has some life steal. We can't tell. Actually, he has no items right now. Uh, so that's how good Imsko is. He doesn't need items to uh, do any damage <laughs> right here, guys. Of course, guys, it's a display book. Strafe, actually... Uh, or Strafe and Bum take out Ram Rills, but it was a 1v2. So that if... If Oxygen are able to exploit the fact that this is a 4v3, they should be able to get something out of his meds. Landed the Shield Slam onto Lucere, and there's no Decker. There's no more Containment Fence to be worried about. Stasis Gym popped by Involve underneath the safety of his own tower, but beautiful knock-up right there. There's, that's the howitzer we expect to see. Knocking people out from the safety of their towers, and then immediately uh, following up on the uh, on the, the R2000 rocket. So, despite the fact that Ram Riddles went down, he forced an over, he forced a uh, Rat Pack to spread themselves thin. Oxygen was able to capitalize on it, and now as long as Oxygen play their cards right, they should be able to pick up an inhibitor. We'll see if Rat Pack are able to sustain. Marty going very far for it, uses the Horfrost to catch three out, but this is his zoning tool. The main priority, main objective here is getting down this inhibitor name. Yeah, if they, I think they're going to keep doing that, just harassing them. If, they, if they're chasing a player out of their base, it means they're not focusing on the minions and they're not protecting their inhibitor. So I think you're going to keep seeing this, all this harass, all this poke. Uh, Marty jumping up there just to, just a sort of distraction to get yeah. them away from that inhibitor as best they can. This is going to be falling here straight. Actually forced to use his ultimate inner fire on the creep wave in mid to try to keep the pressure off of his core. And even then, the siege minions are going to get a couple auto attacks on that core. Maybe about one to per, one to two percent damage, but uh, this is just Rat Pack continuing to allow Team Oxygen to just slowly but surely win the game. They're gonna fall back. Orb Prime is not yet up. Um, I think that may be a display, but it should be. A, look at that! There he is. There's the uh, 
There, I'm not gonna say the H word. We're not gonna say the H word, Nate. There's the uh, <laughs> Lord Prime being picked up here, and Rat Pack have to do something. Bum is there. They know. They they know that this is happening. They have to know that's what's happening right now. But what can they do about it? I feel like it's it's all. They have to be all in right now. Either go try to go for the Lord Prime, which is a little bit too late. Or just try to defend outside of your core. Rambrose is caught out bump, uses the feet. At very minimum, should be able to force out the reforge, and he does. Dodges the siphon. Look at that containment fence on the four, but it does absolutely nothing. It was well done by Lucera to get that containment fence, but it just simply doesn't matter. Meds was able to land the shield slam on the two, isolating them out, and now the Horfrost is keeping Crown in place. All the meanwhile, Imps goes over here chasing down Strafe. Aggressive Blink Charm forward, and Ram Riddles is here as well. And he's going to Shadow Slip in there, take out three, just in a moment's notice. Crown gets taken out. The Orb Prime card is just simply too strong. As we do see, no Reforge online. That's all five. They get the handful, and I think this is going to be a pretty straightforward win right here for Oxygen, Nate. Yeah, unfortunately, Rat Pack weren't able to replicate the uh, the team fight they had in the last uh, Orb Prime um, and uh, Oxygen coming out full five man wide with the Orb Prime with two inhibitors down. That's what she wrote, I'm afraid. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. This is going to be uh, your two teams going to the finals. It's not going to have Reborn. Now, last week we <laughs> last week we didn't have Reborn because Reborn weren't able to participate. Totally understandable, but um, I love I love Reborn. They're, they're, I, I love those guys. Uh, I, I mean, I have a Reborn shirt. Come on now. I, I have a Reborn shirt. You saw me wore it. If, if you didn't see it, I, I wore it one time, and people lost their mind. Uh, but what I really am excited to see is that these teams are – the skill gap between these teams are getting closer together, closer together, closer together. I think that's really, really exciting, and I hope these guys continue to pursue that, specifically Rat Pack as well as uh, Arctic Wolves, who we were able to – you weren't able to see them, Nate, but Arctic Wolves came back. And they, they almost beat, uh, they almost were able to get into the semifinals. It was very, very close uh, up against Rat Pack. Uh, and it's just, uh, hopefully these guys come back and continue to fight. We'll see. Maybe they can, I mean, maybe they can uh, go across the seas, across the Atlantic Ocean, and be part of PCL EU next weekend. We'll see. We'll have to see. I mean, from the first time, that's one of the first sort of matches I've seen of Rat Pack. I'm very impressed about them. To lose to probably one of the best sides uh, yeah. we've got right now. Is no shame, and they did well. They, they won team fights. They took it to them. Uh, I think Oxygen and A just do what they did, and they just grind out teams. Um, any little advantage you give them, they will, you know, they take an inch, they take a foot, they take a mile. You know, yeah. that's what that's what they do. Um, so no shame there whatsoever. And I'm really, you know, looking forward to Rat Pack coming back. And they they are definitely one of those teams that can break into and become one of those uh, those those top teams or what we consider to be the top team teams in Reborn, Oxygen, and Carbon right now. All right, guys. Well, there you have it. Our finalists are going to be between uh, Carbon and Oxygen. Correct? I, I believe Nate. This is a little bit of a rematch from PCS. <laughs> if uh, if if memory re uh, if memory is serving me correctly here. Yeah, um, uh, Oxygen and I actually won the uh, the last PCS. The there last you go. So we'll see if uh, Carbon is the last. They were uh, Oxygen won the PCS, Carbon won the PCL, and now it's coming to a full head right here, which is really <laughs> cool. And of course, it's EU versus NA on top of it. So it could not be a better storyline between these two teams coming into the finals of Paragon Competitive League NA. Number four, number four. Speaking of the number four, head over to Matcharino. Use that coupon code Fowadala Dala. <laughs> PCL number four guys continue to contribute to these teams and thank you for what you have done thus far any monetary support is deeply appreciated not from us the players they're the ones who are fighting for it and they're the ones who ultimately are able to get it because of that and again guys want a big, a big shout out to the the uh, team on the back end guys we have uh, so many talented pe people have recently joined us I got to cast with Pith yesterday now I'm sitting here with you Nate uh, and it's been an absolute pleasure to cast with you guys. I love Notch. Notch is a brother to me. But every now and then, it's fun to cast with other people. And it ha I I'm excited to go into the finals with this. So, guys, without further ado, we're going to set up the finals right here. Don't go anywhere. I'm twitch.tv forward slash ITG Shane Lynch. That's twitch.tv forward slash Nate underscore Holmes. Right? <laughs> yeah, that works. That works. Excellent. <laughs> go follow him, guys. Go follow his Twitch. And we'll be back with the finals for Paragon Competitive League number four in just a moment. Stay tuned. 